Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. We are going to continue our topic on organic chemistry with acids and bases. What are acids and bases? There are a few definitions and the one of the definitions that we are going to look at is from Bronsted and Laurie. A Bronsted Laurie acid is a proton donor and a Bronsted Laurie base is a proton acceptor. A proton is a hydrogen ion and looking at the table given in figure 2.1 we can see a few examples of prostate lorry acids and bases inorganic acids we can see are like HCl, H2SO4, HSO4- H2O and H3O+. Organic acids are like acetic acid or citric acids. A base, a prostate lorry base, can also include water, ammonia, the hydroxide ion, and also the NH2 ion. And the organic base are, for example, methylamine, methoxide, acetone, and ethylene. As we can see, all Bronsted Laurie acids contain a proton and the net charge may be 0, plus 1 or minus 1. All Bronsted Laurie bases contain a lone pair of electrons or a pi bond. The net charge may also be 0 or a negative charge. Some molecules contain both hydrogen atoms and also lone pairs and thus can act either as acids or bases depending on the particular reaction. An example is the addictive pain reliever morphine. Okay, we can see at the HO side where we have the hydrogen and the oxygen, that is where the hydroxide group is. The lone pair on the oxygen will pose as the basic sites and also all the pi bonds in the ring. The acidic sites are where you have your hydrogen atoms. So the hydroxide bonds make morphine an acid. The lone pairs and pi bonds make morphine a base. How do reactions of bronsted lorry acids and bases occur? A bronsted lorry acid base reaction will result in the transfer of a proton from an acid to a base. In an acid base reaction, one bond is broken and another one is formed. The electron pair of the base, B, forms a new bond to the proton of the acid. The acid, HA, loses a proton, leaving the electron pair in the HA bond on A. A general formula is given in the diagram as we can see, the base, B, gives a pair of electrons to the proton. The bond between H and A breaks and the electron goes to A as according to the arrows. And the formation of A-, minus, which is the conjugate base, and a new bond between H and A. B, which is the conjugate acid. The movement of electrons in reactions can be illustrated using curved arrow notation. Two curved arrows are needed. Loss of a proton from an acid forms its conjugate base. As we can see in the equation given below, water, which acts as an acid, loses its proton to the amide 
the NH2 which is a base and it will form the conjugate base and there is the formation of the conjugate acid which is the ammonia so there will be the loss of a proton from the acid to form the conjugate base with the gain of a proton by a base to form its conjugate acid a double arrow a double reaction arrow is used between starting materials and products to indicate that the reaction can proceed in the forward and reverse directions these are equilibrium arrows the acid strength of an acid can be calculated from its Ka value. Okay. Acid strength is actually the tendency of an acid to donate a proton. The more readily a, pro a compound donates a proton, the stronger is the acid. Acidity is measured by an equilibrium constant. When a bronsted lauryl acid, HA, is dissolved in water, an acid-base reaction occurs and an equilibrium constant can be written for this reaction. Looking at the equation given, we see acid HA and water which is now a base. The lone pair from water is given to the proton in the acid and the electron pair between the hydrogen and A is uh, given to the A. A forms the conjugate base and now water after gaining the proton will form the hydronium ion which is also the conjugate acid. And we can calculate out the equilibrium constant KEQ by using this equation where the products is divided by the starting materials. The products are the hydrogen ion and the concentration of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of HA and water. The concentration of the solvent water is essentially constant. The equation, which is the equilibrium constant, also known as the acidity constant Ka, can be defined. Ka is equals to the concentration of water times the equilibrium constant which is equals to the concentration of your products divided by the concentration of the acid. And it is generally more convenient when describing an acid strength to use pKa. And pKa values are actually the negative log of the Ka value. We can see in the table given, Ka values of typical organic acids will start from 10 to the power of minus 5 to 10 to the power of minus 50. The larger the number, the stronger is the acid. The smaller the number, the weaker is the acid. So, since pKa is the negative log of Ka, pKa values of typical organic acids will be from positive 5 to positive 50. So the smaller number, the stronger is the acid for the pKa values. The larger the number, the weaker is the acid. The following table shows value the pKa values of acids and the conjugate base. So when the stronger is the acid, the weaker is the conjugate base. Since HCl is a very strong acid, its conjugate base is the weakest. And for methane, the CH bond, the hydrogen in methane, has a pKa value of 50, showing that it is a very weak acid. Therefore, its conjugate base, CH3- minus, is a very strong base. Okay, now we are going to look at factors that determine the acid strength. 
Anything that stabilizes a conjugate base makes the starting acid more acidic. Four factors affect the acidity of the acid. These are 1. Element effects 2. Inductive effects 3. Resonance effects and 4. Hybridization effects So, to compare the acidity of any two acids first of all, we need to always draw the conjugate bases and then we determine which conjugate base is more stable. The more stable the conjugate base, the more acidic is the acid. Okay, the first factor that determines acid strength is the element present in the acid. Across a row of the periodic table, the acidity of the acid will increase with the increase in the electronegativity of the element. Let's look at the second period of the periodic table. We will have carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine. When these elements are bonded to hydrogen, the bond between, as we can see, between carbon and hydrogen, the pKa, pKa value is 50, whereas between nitrogen and hydrogen, the pKa value is 38. For oxygen hydrogen, it's 16. And hydrogen fluorine, it is 3.2. So we can see as electronegativity increases, the acidity also increases. When there is a positive or a negative charge, it is stabilized when it is spread over a larger volume and if we were to compare between the anions fluoride and bromide we will see the fluoride is a much smaller anion as compared to the bromide so it will be the less stable conjugate base with a pKa value of 3.2 for the hydrogen fluoride. It is less acidic. For the HBr, we will find the pKa value is negative 9. It is more acidic, so the, the bromide ion and ions is a more stable conjugate base. Going down the column of the periodic table, acidity increases as the size of the anion increases. Going down, if we, would, if we were to take, for example, the halogen group, we will have HF, HCl, HBr, and HI. As we go down the column, the size of the anion will increase, and this will increase the acidity. So size and not electronegativity determines acidity down a column. The acidity increases both from left to right across a row and down a column of the periodic table. Although four factors determine the overall acidity of a particular hydrogen atom, element effects the identity of A is the single most important factor in determining in determining the acidity of the HA bond. The other factor that determines acid strength is inductive effects. An inductive effect is the pool of electron density through sigma bonds caused by electronegativity differences between atoms. In the example below, we can compare the acidities of ethanol and 222-trifluoroethanol. We note that the latter is more acidic than the former. Ethanol has a pKa value of 16, whereas 222-trifluoroethanol has a pKa value of 
12.4 and therefore it is a much stronger acid. Why is 222 trifluoroethanol more acidic than ethanol? Now if we were to compare both the conjugate bases, for the ethoxide ion, there is no additional electronegative atoms to stabilize the conjugate base. But for the 222 trifluoroethoxide ion, we will see there are three fluorine atoms that have higher electronegativity and this will withdraw electron density and stabilize the conjugate base. Okay, when electron density is pulled away from the negative charge through sigma bonds by very electronegative negative atoms, it is referred to as an electron withdrawing inductive effect. More electronegative atoms stabilizes regions of high electron density by an electron withdrawing inductive effect. The acidity of the acid increases with the presence of electron withdrawing groups. As we can see in the example given, we have the electron density diagram. The dark red of the oxygen atom indicates a region of high electron density. But in the trifluoroethoxide anion, the atom, the oxygen atom is yellow, include, indicating that it is less electron rich. The third factor that influences acidity is resonance effect. Now, in order to see the res this resonance effect, we compare two compounds, ethanol and acetic acid. Ethanol has a pKa value of 16, whereas acetic acid has a pKa value of 4.8, and it, acetic acid is the stronger acid. When the conjugate bases of the two species are compared, it is evident that the conjugate base of acetic acid enjoys resonance stabilization whereas that of ethanol does not have any resonance stabilization. Now, for the ethanol, the bond between hydrogen and oxygen is the one that determines the acidity of ethanol. When this bond breaks, it forms the ethoxide conjugate base. And the negative charge is localized on the on the oxygen atom and we can see there is only one Lewis structure but for the acetic acid when the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen breaks off there is the formation of the conjugate base and this conjugate base in in this con conjugate base Resonance delocalization will make the anion much more stable as compared to the ethoxide ion. And since the conjugate base is more stable, with the presence of two resonance structures, it is the acetic acid is the stronger acid. The negative charge now in this conjugate base in the acetic anion can be delocalized on two oxygen atoms and this is what we call resonance stabilized conjugate base. We can recognize resonance effect by looking at the electron density of both the conjugate bases. In the ethoxide ion, we can see the negative charge is concentrated on a single oxygen atom, making the anion less stable. Whereas in the acetate, we will 
we see the negative charge is delocalized over both the oxygen atoms and this will make the anion more stable. The final factor that affects acidity is the hybridization of the element. So let us con consider relative acidities of three different compounds containing the CH bonds. We can see we have ethane, ethylene and acetylene. The weakest acid is ethane with a pK value of 50, whereas ethylene has a pKa value of 44 and acetylene has a pKa value of 25. The higher the percentage of S character of the hybrid orbital, the closer the lone pair is held to the nucleus and the more stable is the conjugate base. And since the conjugate base is more stable, the acidity also increases. So let us see now how does hybridization affects the strength of the acid. Let us look at the anions or the conjugate bases resulting when the proton leaves. For the ethane, the anion that is produced has a lone pair on a CH2 carbon and this CH2 carbon is sp3 hybridized. Since it is sp3 hybridized, it has 25% as character. For the ethane, the carbon that has the negative charge is an sp2 hybridized carbon. An sp2 hybridized carbon has 33% as character. For the acetylene, when the proton leaves, the resulting acetylite anion, the carbon that has the negative charge, is an sp carbon. An sp carbon has 50% s character. So increasing s character will increase the stability of the resulting anion. So we can see. Let us look at the diagram below where we show the density, the electron density of the anions, for the anions. For the ethane, we can see the electron density when the hydrogen leaves is higher as compared to the acetylene anion and the ethylene anion. The acetylene anion has the least color. It is more yellowish. So as the lone pair of electrons is put closer to the nucleus, the negatively charged carbon appears less intensely red, making it having less electron density. Okay, the following table shows a summary of the factors that determine acidity. So looking back, element effect, the acidity of the acid increases both left to right across a row and down the column of the periodic table. For inductive effect, the acidity of the acid increases with the presence of electron withdrawing groups in A, in the anion. Resonance effects the acidity of the acid increases when the conjugate base A is resonance stabilized. And with hybridization effects, we see the acidity of the acid increases as the percentage of S character increases. So some commonly used acids in organic chemistry are like HCl, H2SO4, and HNO3. These are inorganic acids which are used in organic reactions. So two examples of organic acids are given below which is one is acetic acid and the other is para toluene sulfonic acid TSOH. 
Acetic acid has a pKa at a value of 4.8, whereas para toluene sulfonic acid has a pKa value of negative 7. The following table shows some common strong bases used in organic reactions and as we can see the oxygen bases which are hydroxide, the methoxide, the ethoxide and the tertiary butoxide. Nitrogen bases such as the amides, the diisopropyl amide and the hydrogen base which is the hydride. As a summary, it should be noted that strong bases have weak conjugate acids with high pKa values, usually more than 12. Strong bases have a net negative charge, but not all negatively charged species are strong bases. For example, all the halides, none of the halides that is the fluoride, the chloride, the bromide, and the iodide. They are all not strong bases. And carbon ions, which are negatively charged carbon atoms, are especially strong bases. A common example is butyl lithium. Two other weaker organic bases are triethylamine and pyridine. Acids and bases can, only, can also be defined as using the Lewis definition. The Lewis definition of acids and bases is more general than the bronsted lowry definition. A Lewis acid is a compound that is an electron pair Accepted, whereas a Lewis base is a compound that is an electron pair donor. Lewis bases are structurally same as Cronstadt Lowry bases. Both have available electron pairs, which is a lone pair or an electron pair in a pi bond. Cronstadt Lowry for a bronsted lowry definition of a base is one that donates this electron pair to a proton. But a Lewis base donates this electron pair to anything that is electron deficient. For example, we look at the given term. Hydroxide is a Lewis base. So is the methanol, the oxygen atom has an has two electron pairs and ethylene has electron pairs in the pi bond these are electron pairs that are that, that are available to be donated and they are they will act as lewis bases a lewis acid must be able to accept an electron pair all bronsted lowry acids are lewis Acids, but the reverse is not necessarily true. Any species that is electron deficient and capable of accepting an electron pair is also a Lewis acid. Now, common examples of Lewis acids, which are definite, which are not bronsted lowry acids, include BF3 and AlCl3. These compounds contain elements in group 3A of the periodic table and they can all accept an electron pair because they do not have field valence shells electrons. We can see examples of Lewis acids, water, methanol. These compounds are both Bronsted Lewis acids and Lewis acids. For BF3 and ALCL3, these compounds are only Lewis acids. In a Lewis acid-based reaction, a Lewis base donates an electron pair to a Lewis acid. A general pattern for, organic, for an organic reaction, we will see electron-rich species 
will react with electron poor species. The simplest of Lewis acid based reaction is one where one bond is formed and no bonds are broken. This is illustrated with the reaction between BF3 and water. Water donates a pair of electrons to BF3 to form a new bond. A Lewis acid is also called an electrophile. So, when a Lewis base reacts with an electrophile other than a proton, the Lewis base is also called a nucleophile. An example here is BF3. BF3 is the electrophile and water is the nucleophile. Now we can see more examples of Lewis acid reactions. Lewis acid base reactions. So in each reaction, the electron pair is not removed from the Lewis base. Instead, it is donated to an atom of the Lewis acid and one new covalent bond is formed. Looking at the example given, we have the tertiary butoxide cation. This is also this is the electrophile and it is also a Lewis acid reacting with the bromide ion. The bromide anion now is the nucleophile and it's also the Lewis base. When the bond forms between the carbon and the bromine, we have the bond that is formed is a new covalent bond. The same thing goes when aluminum trichloride reacts with chloromethane. Aluminum trichloride is the Lewis acid or the electrophile and the chloromethane is the nucleophile and or the Lewis base. The base that is the lone pair from the chlorine will, will, will be bonded to the aluminum and a new bond is formed between the, between the al aluminum and the chlorine. In some Lewis acid base reactions, one bond is formed and one bond is broken. So to draw the products of these reactions, we have to keep these following steps in mind. First, always identify the Lewis acid and the Lewis base. And then, draw a curved arrow from the electron pair of the base to the electron deficient atom of the acid. Count the number of electron pairs and break a bond when needed to keep the correct number of valence electrons. Consider the Lewis acid base reaction between cyclohexene and HCl. The bronze tetlauri acid HCl is also a Lewis acid and cyclohexene having a pi bond is the Lewis base. Let's see as given in the diagram the cyclohexene the pi bond that part is called the Lewis base and the proton in HCl is electron deficient so that is the Lewis acid okay then. so to draw the product of this reaction the electron pair in the pi bond of the Lewis base forms a new bond to the proton of the Lewis acid generating a carbocation the HCl bond must break giving its two electrons to the chlorine forming the chloride anion because two electron pairs are involved so we have two curved arrows the first one is when the pi electron from the pi bond attacks the hydrogen from the hydrogen chloride and the second arrow shows the movement of electron from the bond between HCl to the chloride ion. 